Blows time on. And we're away. Straight down to uh, the winger, Gary Mercer. Runs into trouble, though, with Dowling and Tunks immediately putting him to the ground unceremoniously. Wallace's dummy half. Blind side. Comes the second row forward, Sam Stewart. And now uh, Adrian Shelford, who was originally listed to play in jumper number 10. He's in jumper number 8, as you probably saw. Back to fullback Williams. Gary Jack. Slipping and held by Mark Horro. 10 metres short of the halfway mark. Now Shearer in there, error a mistake by Australia. But the referee, Mr. Keisha, calling the knock on. Michael O'Connor, who has the safest hands in the business. So the first scrum of the match. 32 metres out from the Australian line. Mr. Keisha, the referee, has handled only one test match before. That was Australia versus Papua New Guinea. It's an untidy scrum, but Australia has come up with it, but he's ruled a knock on again. That's Mr. Keisha. I don't know of too many Indian rugby league referees in the world. But he's lived in New Zealand just about all his life. Now, New Zealand moving it across the back line. Dean Bell caught and dumped. Brett Kenny got underneath him, drove him back. Now McGahn runs into a brick wall. Wayne Pierce there to take him. Wallace dummy half. Getting it across to the front row forward, Ross Taylor, who has a reputation as being a tough guy. Wallace, blindside move to Shelford. Flicking the ball anywhere, picked up, luckily, probably by Horro. He's caught 32 metres out from the Australian line. Now it's to Friend, across to Cooper. Cutting out Bell with a long pass to Eero, who's put it down, picked up by Australia. And there's a punch on in centre field. Clayton Friend getting in there, arguing with Brett Kenny, some pushing and shoving. The big men come into it. And it stops. The referee, Keisha, calling out Clayton Friend. What's he issuing a warning to him? Well, some fireworks early, Jack. Yes, there is. We've got, they've got a wounded player down there. I can't pick his number. The wing boy. Uh, Santa. Is that Bell? He's up now. And here's that incident again. Cooper's pass cut out era who uh, put it down and there was originally the knock on but the, the penalty has been given to New Zealand well he's ruled that Australia has been the aggressor in that particular passage of play so first scoring opportunity to New Zealand and the kicker is a very interesting young man Kevin Eero his name is He's only just turned 19. Big, strong fellow. In fact, when he plays, when he runs, you could be excused for thinking it was Mal Meninga of about five or six years ago. Big responsibility for him tonight. Kevin Eero is his name. Now, this kick is about in line with the right hand upright. 40 metres out, plenty of height, and just to the side of the post. Brought out by Gary Jack. No score in this test match. Now, Jack has brought it out about 12 metres. And now the uh, New Zealand forwards start to return some of the heavy work on the Australian boys as Pierce is caught. Simmons getting a pass away to Tunks. And a late tackle and there's some heavy work going in on Tunks. Punch is being thrown by Taylor. Here it comes, it's on. Well, Taylor came rushing in late on Tunks then. Immediately the Australian forwards responded to his call for help. And the Kiwis came charging in as well. Now, Taylor, I thought, was the aggressor in that. Taylor was involved in a uh, knock on Gary and Greg Dowling when uh, the Kiwis played the Queensland side here a couple of weeks ago. In fact, he, he put Dowling down for the count. That's 10, number 10, Ross Taylor. And as I said to you before, he has a reputation for toughness. Well, things like that put our game in jeopardy the game that should just about make the hook football ball of shame well the referee saw it the way we did and uh, a grim-faced Don Ferner watches 
as Australia get their penalty. And Lewis kicks for touch and will find it about 40 metres out from his own line. No score in this test match full of action, Darrell Eastlake. Well, certainly, I don't know about that, Blue, because New Zealand have been putting the stink on since they came on the field, particularly Taylor. He's obviously after uh, Dowling, and Dowling had a bit to say after that first incident. Let's hope they settle down and play some rugby league. Right, Australia with the football now. They're making their way toward the halfway line. They slip a ball out the back door, quickly taken by Pierce. But it goes on to Bobby Linder playing in jumper number 13. We remind you they are wearing international jumpers tonight. Sterling now fires one out to, to Lewis. A, a run around movement. They're going wide. Here's Kenny. Kenny now gets it into stride. Kenny turns it back inside the Shearer. Loose ball though. Miles gets it off the deck. And plenty of push and shove. And there's a knock on there too. So we'll have a scrum down near the Kiwi 22. But Brett Kenny showing that he's keen to run tonight, Jack Gibson. Well, he picked up 40, 40 metres on that play. It was a pretty big run. It was great. Well, you expect him to do that. Kiwi ball now. and They fire it out of the scrum pretty quickly. Let's see if they can get some uh, running into this game rather than just a little bit of biffo that they've been turning on. First of the wing has been getting involved a fair bit. Shelford going uh, hard and straight, but they wrap him up. And there'll be a bit uh, done between the props before this game is over, let me tell you. There'll be plenty done. And there's the tough man, Ross Taylor now, running into uh, a little bit of heavy green and gold. They fire it back for the kick. High, high punt kick down into Australian territory taken by Shearer. Shearer ringed by black and white jumpers. They swarm in on him. Still on his feet, Shearer. By oh, G's had a good season this year. Played very well for the uh, Queensland side in the State of Origin series. Australia now trying to uh, get into the New Zealand territory. They're just short the halfway territory there into the ground by about three or four metres but line pretty deep now let's see who the runners are Tunks comes barreling forward but only goes a metre or two brought down pretty quickly Horrow in there along with Shelford Royce Simmons with a special of his he makes four or five metres into the black and white territory comes out to Lewis he reverses it back into uh, the other side of the Australian lineup and there's a good run from Australia as they handball it round now look at Lewis looking around for support is Sterling Sterling for Australia and he's in off a Lewis pass at Sterling and the Australian side draw first blood that was a beauty oh boy the Australians willing to throw it around Sterling in for the green and goals See it again now as the ball came round to Sterling now. He fired it out to Bobby Linder. Linder really spit him up the centre. He got it wide and came back inside to Lewis. Lewis just stood there, had plenty of time. Flicked it back to Sterling. Sterling put the accelerator on the floorboards and there it was, four points. Well, this was a real try. Sterling gets two handlings of the play and so does Wally Lewis. Very seldom you see that happen. Just kept that alive. There's Sterling on the back up. O'Connor with a kick now. Difficult angle. Gets it in the air. And the flags go up. A magnificent kick from Michael O'Connor. So Australia now lead New Zealand 6 0. We'll be back shortly to Lang Park. Welcome back to Lang Park for this big test match between Australia and New Zealand. From the kickoff, Australia used two tackles. There was an illegal bit of play. Australia got the penalty, and the result of that now is the tap kick. Right, Australia back into New Zealand territory. Tunks will play it back to Royce Simmons. And they're just grafting away the Australians. They're just making three and four metres, and then they'll throw it out wide. There's plenty of uh, pace in this side. And they're just waiting now nice and deep, the Australians. Very, very deep. Ian Maurice, anything could happen here. Well, we could. Six points to nothing. Australia lead. Still plenty of niggle in this match, too. There's a few things going on in the tackles that have uh, gone undetected. Now, place situated just inside the uh, New Zealand half. And Miles will get up to play it in centre field. Last tackle is signalled. Simmons has got it back to Lewis. The kick to uh, open spaces from Lewis. is a good one. Here's the followers coming through after the ball. But um, New Zealand's Mark Elia takes it and is grounded in the end goal. Good chase for Michael O'Connor. Well, I reckon Michael O'Connor was offside there a couple of yards, but the game is... you get away with it. Well, he certainly chased the kick and was able to grab hold of Elia and put him down in the end goal area. 
Now, I know a lot of people in New South Wales are interested in one of the earlier games that was played here, the combined Sydney Colts and the 4X Youth Squad. The Sydney side won uh, quite comfortably, 40 points to 26. 40 to 26, the Sydney side winning. Now, from the restart of play, Gary Jack has to run back almost to his own quarter line before he's able to get into a running situation. Now linking up with Wayne Pierce on the halfway mark and put down and almost into touch. Managed to stay there. Linda is now a dummy half. Making about five or six metres but losing it behind him. Picked up by Pierce, who's played it to uh, Simmons. Out of Dowling. And wherever Dowling takes it up and tunks, you'll find this fellow Taylor. Now some switches are playing more heavy hits too. McGann and Taylor again. That was Shearer who... Uh, caught that one now it's with Lewis across to Miles back for Lewis it's gone behind him Lewis is able to pick it up get it to Sterling Sterling chased by Cooper away from him straightening back to halfway and finally put down but it's the last tackle being signaled for Australia they lead six points to nothing as Lewis puts the kick again into the open spaces Williams has to run back almost to his own line before he picks it up the chases are there for him now Linda slipped and Williams is able to get to the 10 meter mark before he's put down Elia running from the dummy half position that can't make any progress at all now it's back to Taylor caught by Tunks Wallace is the dummy half to friend and, a, and to Cooper Cooper linking up now with the hero hero tries to bump off or fend off Shearer but Shearer six to him and finally well I thought he pushed me into touch right the touch judge didn't agree play on he said it's with uh, Cooper a run around move with Mercer, Mercer straightening now to the halfway mark. Last tackle signal from the Kiwis, promising play from them. Australia leads six points to nil. Clayton Friend gets a pass blindside. It's gone behind him, picked up and kicked through by Cooper. Now it's picked up by Gary Jack for Australia. Tunks done a great tackle on that just a moment ago there. He's certainly uh, been in the action. Now Dowling takes the tackle. 35 metres out from his own line. Simmons dummy half. Dummy to Niebling. Then got a pass away to Shearer. Shearer into the clear. He's running away from Williams. He's moving. He's stopping. Looking for support. Got it back to Pierce. Pierce trying to link up with O'Connor. O'Connor has it. Steps inside and caught 10 metres out. Good play from the Australians. O'Connor the player. 10 metres out from the New Zealand line. Across to Simmons. Got past one. Can he offload? No, he can't. 12 metres out from the New Zealand line. Last tackle signal for Australia. It's to Sterling, to Lewis. And all to Tunks for the high tackle. Kicked through by Dowling. Now it's picked up by Cooper. Well, the referee took no action on what I thought was a high tackle. It's the New Zealand coach, Tony Gordon, a former All Black. There's a punch on the out here between Mercer and uh, Kenny. Well, Kenny tackled Mercer on suspicion, Jack, didn't he? Well, they forgot about Tunks. He put on a high shot on Tunks. They've gone for a quick tap here, incidentally. We'll stick with the play now as the second row forward, Horro, makes good progress. 32 metres out from his own line. Six points to nothing. Australia lead the Kiwis. Darrell, the excitement's still there. Yes, they're starting to play some good football now, the Kiwis. Starting to get a bit looser. They were very, very nervous when they ran onto this ground. You've got to remember six of their players have never played Australia before. And, of course, Lang Park's a fairly eerie place for any visiting side. But uh, they're looking a lot better. But O'Connor's hands over in that far corner. Gee, he's a good player. There'll be a penalty given here or perhaps a scrum back down. Yes, it'll be a scrum. It's in the uh, Kiwi end of the ground by, uh, well, it's about 10 metres short of the halfway line. Scrums one, Australia. New Zealand three scrums. So there you go, 3-0. New Zealand getting a fair share of the ball. They haven't had much chance to do anything with it as Gary Jack comes back into the back line, swinging around, looking for someone to throw it to, and there was no one close enough. <laughs> like a ballet dancer, Gary Jack, as Miles now winds up. He belts his way four or five metres upfield, centre field, midway between the half and the quarter. New Zealand's end of the ground. The ball comes out to Lewis. Lewis quickly gets it out to Bobby Linner. He's barreled very quickly by McGann. Now it goes back to uh, Sterling. Sterling gets it wide to Niebling. A long pass out to Gary Jack. 
Gary Jack wrapped up though on the far corner of the ground and Australia will throw it back this way now they're not deep though they're just looking to take it up at the moment as a settler and Niebling does that and they're right on the 22 now for the last tackle watch for the kick there's Sterling and there's the kick and well placed kick it is too taken well though and look at this driven back into the end goal area will Australia too tough for this side at the moment for some big defence they just barreled New Zealand back into the end goal Jack tough stuff out there well, it is, but New Zealand also shown the ability to defend. I think they've, they've handled that pretty well. And if their condition is as good as Australia, this could be a pretty exciting game. Well, Australia will receive the ball again from that drop, and it goes straight to Jerry, uh, Gary Jack right on the halfway line now. He winds up. Kenny down injured at the moment. Kenny uh, just cramped, I would think, the way that he's... Uh, or taking a bit of a knock in the leg anyways. He's freeing it up. The trainers with him now will come back to uh, the play. They're short of the 22 just by a couple of metres, Australia. Out they come. Here's Dowling. Where's Ross Taylor? Have a look for him. <laughs> there he was. He wasn't far away. These two are, are gunning for each other, I'm told, as the ball swings back inside. Unloaded very quickly to Sterling now. Here's Shearer. Shearer gets a little bit of pace going. He's trying to uh, get the ball free and cut it. Dean Bell balls on it for the Kiwis so what can they do they're inside their 22 and they've got to get out of there quickly as Mercer does his best to do just that and he mainly uh, well he made it just by centimeters Shelford 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 out to Cooper they come back inside this is Stewart pretty mobile second rower tough build this bloke when you see him uh, down stripped down to his shorts big frame big uh, body the upper body as they swing it around now Trying to get going as Iro gets tackled midway between the half and the quarter now. The Kiwis need to get down to Australia's end, so McGahn puts that little chip kick through. Through they go, but Gary Jack will take it quite safely without too much pressure. The idea was there, but the Kiwis didn't chase quick enough, Jack. Well, they did chase pretty well. He just got there before Jack did. But I have their ability to, to chase the football. When they haven't got it, I think is has amazed me a little bit. I'm very enthusiastic. Right, Australia now through uh, Wayne Pierce, still short of the halfway line, just by a couple of metres as they flick it out now to Lewis. And uh, no, that's Tunks. Tunks to Lewis. Lewis can't handle it though. It comes off his boot. It's gone loose, and New Zealand will come up with it, and they'll play the ball from there. Horro, the second rower. They get it out to Mercer. A bit of a step at this Mercer, and a surprise selection in this side. Uh, a player that's not that well known in New Zealand, but he certainly seems to be doing okay tonight. And look at Shelford now as he makes a big barging run down, but couldn't unload the ball. Well, Sterling has got the ball for Australia, so all of that good work done by Shelford now is lost. Now it goes quickly out. It was Lewis who got the ball, not, not uh, Sterling at all. So a bit of good work there from Wally Lewis and some good work from Shelford. A tough big front rower. Dowling turns it back to Sterling now. Sterling white weaving his way up as uh, Simmons now tries to unload but decides to take the tackle. Lewis dummy half. Here's Tunks. Tunks if he can break it. Tunks! Tunks if he can unload it and just couldn't do it. He had the Gary Jack shadowing him there but he just couldn't get it away. And what's the referee going to do here? He's going to put down a scrum. That's what he's going to do. Australia have only won one scrum to New Zealand's three. To New Zealand feet, it should go that way, and it does so. Leighton Friend swivels around and gets it to Cooper. He quickly gets it out to Darrell Williams, who doesn't unload, takes the tackle. And uh, the Kiwis are a bit slow to get back on side at the moment. They're still running back. His uh, Iro takes the ball up, and he makes a break too, and he's got no support. He's weaving his way downfield with some great running there. But where are the Kiwis? They're half a mile back. They need to get on this ball, Ian Maurice, and they need to do it now. This is Hugh McGahn taking it up for the Kiwis in centre field. He's about 40 metres out from the Australian line. The Australians lead six points to nil. Now, here comes Taylor turning his back to the fence, getting it away to Clayton Friend. It's gone back for the uh, second row forward, Sam Stewart. Stewart trying to hurdle over everybody, still going, Stewart! Got a pass back inside, and it's to Taylor, and Taylor's going to score! Well, that was an amazing try. Stewart went 360 degrees, hurdled a couple of fallen players, and was able to link up with that man, number 10, Taylor. Watch it, this is Stewart. 
There he goes, jumping through them. Got to the quarter line. Saw Taylor back in there, and Taylor, the big prop, was able to barge over and uh, score underneath the post. Well, the Australian defence here, I think they're all staring at their big toe because there's very little reaction. Hey, you get him, not me. He just kept up marching up centre field, and he's got a receiver outside him, and he walked one in. And there's the kick. It's all level. Six points all. Australia and New Zealand here at Lane Park. Calcium, vitamins, cereals, polyunsaturates, meat protein. Meaty Bites builds a healthier dog. Five ways, with all the satisfaction of added marabone. When it comes to the crunch, Meaty Bites has all the good taste of true to the meat varieties. Meaty Bites builds a healthier dog. Five ways. Almost every smoker knows what it's like to run out of puff, but few know the reason why. Inside your lungs are millions of tiny air sacs. Cigarette by cigarette, these air sacs die until you're out of breath almost all the time. This is emphysema. Nine out of ten average smokers have the beginnings of emphysema. Fortunately, some quit smoking before they quit breathing. Call the quit line now. A 4-hour BASF super high-grade videotape is good for at least 1,000 car chasers, guaranteed. BASF, you can't erase the quality. From 12.95 at the tape place at Meyer. Right now, there are dozens of people trying to sell what they claim are mobile telephones. But there's only one mobile phone that fits neatly into your pocket and allows you to move from car to car without installation. Mobile Tronics Pocket Phone. It uses Telecom's new cellular network to make and receive calls almost anywhere, anytime. Mobile Tronics Pocket Phone. The smallest, most advanced cellular phone in the world fits your pocket. Welcome back to Lane Park. The Kiwis have used up six tackles, and on the sixth, they've kicked down, and Gary Jack has the ball. That's on his quarter line. And caught and put down 32 metres out from the Australian line. Six points all here at Lane Park. So Connor bumps off one. Finally caught. Miles went to dummy half. Sterling got it to Dowling. And around his ankles again was Taylor. Now Lindner will play it. About nine metres short of the halfway mark. Sterling out to Miles. Miles almost to the halfway mark. Sterling kicking. And again to open spaces as well. Darrell Williams almost to the quarter line before he's put down. Prender's dummy half to Dean Bell. Out to Mercer. Mercer thought he saw a gap and he's in the clear again, Mercer. Almost around Lewis, but Lewis was able to hold on to that ankle and pull him down, but a good run from Mercer, showing a nice step tonight. Now it's across to Wallace. To Stewart. And Stewart is caught 40 metres out from the New Zealand line. Taylor. Friend. Cooper. McGann. Into Bell. Bell's to the quarter line, to the halfway mark, I should say. Looking for support. Coming on the pace now, Bell. The pass is back from Mercer. Mercer stepping. Mercer's going to score. The Kiwis are in again. Well, what about that? New Zealand throwing the ball about, backing up, showing pace and deception. Have hit the front. That was Taylor getting it across to Friend. This was a great try. Look, all the way. McGann licking up with Bell. Bell three-quarter pace. Got to the halfway mark. Now, look for support. Clapped on a bit more pace to the quarter line. Saw Mercer there. Mercer had the pace and the step to come inside Shearer and score a great New Zealand try. 
Well, the start of this play, Australia's defence out wide was very skinny. Now, and you see, number six, he went for the intercept and missed out. And they, were, they just got the, had that extra play on them, extra man. Now, Kevin Hero has it placed on the 10-metre line on the 22-metre line as well. So on that junction, as a, he said, one from two. And this 19-year-old, a lot of pressure on him tonight. And it's just to the left-hand side of the upright. So New Zealand retain the lead, 10 points to six. Darrell Eastlake, could this be a boil over? Well, we've seen it before with New Zealand sides. We said Mercer had some step by G has, but the Bell seems to find an extra three metres of pace whenever he puts that black and white jumper on. What a great run from Bell. He really split the Australians and just stood them up with some marvellous footwork. And I tell you what, this side, uh, well, don't under, we said don't underestimate this Kiwi side. They're playing with a lot of purpose. And the Australian side, the world champions, undefeated on the Kangaroo Tour, really have to shake themselves out of a slump. I guess if we could offer an excuse, you'd have to say it's hard for them to come back after the State of Origin series. But this is another ball game. It's a test series, and New Zealand obviously hungry to make victory here. OK, let's come back to the footballers. They're inside the 22, the Kiwis, trying to run it out. And this fellow's impressed tonight, Mercer. By geez, hungry for work. He's been in off his wing, looking uh, to run the ball all the time as Clayton Friend slips another ball, and here they go again. As the Kiwis right down, and look at Bell, Bell turning it all. He just couldn't get the pass away. Perhaps held on a little bit too long then. But they're still going. Plenty of roll on here. Shelford rolls out of one. He gets it into Bell. Bell stepping, dancing, still going. And unloads again. He gets it on to Taylor. Taylor with support with Horro. Horro's put it down, though. But they're looking dangerous, the Kiwis. Throwing it around and backing each other up, Jack Gibson. Well, again, Brett Kenny went for an intercept. And he left them a couple short in defence. Well, this scrum the pack. 32 metres out from the Australian line. Australia will feed the ball. Sterling gets it. A loose pass goes to, to Lewis. He's got a fall on the ball. That's all he could do. So Australia looking a little shell-shocked at the moment. Gary Jack up in the back line. He goes for a stepping run, but they're right onto him. Centre field just outside the 22. Plays it back to Simmons. On to Pierce now. Pierce unwinding, but uh, can't release the football. This Kiwi defence very good. They're wrapping up the player, ball and all. They're looking for runners, the Australians. But, uh, well, they're very tightly bunched around the rucks. Now they're getting a lot deeper, the Australians. On to Sterling. Sterling flicks a nice ball out to for Niebling. Out wide. Only a black and white defence there, though. They've made their way uh, downfield this time as Lewis clears it with a, a long driving kick. Williams will take it, though. Mercer's with him. Look at the step from Williams. <laughs> and a big don't argue. Gets it on to Mercer. And Mercer stepping his way through this Australian side every time he takes the ball. Geez, a good player. I tell you, the good player is Tunks. He's, he's gone for every play. He's gone in every defensive action he could get into. Certainly has, Jack. That have been uh, a bigger score so far without Tunks' defence. Really reading the New Zealand play well. Here's McGahn now as he takes a, a big striding run downfield. Out it goes for the little chip kick. Gary Jack across in cover, but it might uh, just beat him now. Oh, well, he's just got a dive on it. And they claim him, the Kiwis. Oh, they're full of fire. That was Cooper that followed it through. He put the kick through too. Well, Australia now inside their 22. O'Connor will play it back to Simmons. It comes back to Sterling. They're throwing it around now, trying to unload this. Lewis, Lewis. Now they've made the break, Australia. Gene Miles strides up outside the 22, but the support not there. He looked the other side, then he should have gone the blind side. As Sterling with a long floating pass out across the back line. They're putting their heads down and trying to burrow through the Australians, but this defence of New Zealand is there. Gary Jack will play it back to O'Connor. Back to Sterling. He puts the ball in the air. Williams perfectly positioned as he takes the ball and brings it back midway and halfway. And a bustling run, too, from Williams. By gee, they're playing well there. They're taking on the Australians man for man. 
This Kiwi side prepared to throw it and step. Shelford. Shelford with a bustling run back to the halfway line. Well, Anne Maurice, every time they get it, they're deep and they're throwing it around. And, uh, well, their stepping is so good. Yes, it's uh, very pretty to watch. They're playing with a great deal of confidence now, the Kiwis. They lead by 10 points to six. And here they go again, straight up the middle. And it's a horror, the second row forward. Still going up towards the Australian quarter line, up again. They can't hold him. Kevin will mark at least Mark Horro, and here's Clayton Friend across to Cooper, out to Dean Bell, trying to link up, oh, they put it down. Elia couldn't hang on to it, looking very, very dangerous to Kiwis, Jack. I'll tell you what, we've got some people out in the green and gold, I'll tell you, they're out to lunch. There's got three, we've got Pierce playing excellent, and we've got Sterling doing his job. There's a few short. Gone with the feed that scrum. And here's Gary Jack. Brought by Cooper, Friend, and McGann. And now back with Pierce. Pierce just short of the quarter line. Tunks. Met with some strong defense. Gee, and he had no help. They were allowed to gang tackle him. No one come with him. Sterling, Lewis to Kenny. Kenny linking up too with uh, Lynn there and now though Connor's kick is down for Williams. Williams steps and Lynn, uh, Williams brings it straight back upfield again. Exciting stuff from one end of the field to the other. Uh, Lewis, Lewis is down. Immediately the referee halted play. Let's see if we can see what happened here. He tried to tackle Williams. Went down low. Yes. You could see him crying out in pain there. Larry Britton, the Australian trainer, with him. Let's have another look at that. Uh, incident with uh, Pierce. See if we can have an another look. And there he is making the tackle. And it's just obscure there. It seems to be... Uh, well, it could be anything. It might be his foot. He may have twisted his foot as he went down. So it didn't seem to be anything illegal on that play. He just got a boot, maybe, when he went in for the tackle. But what I see with Australia... They're looking for shortcuts in a tough game. And that's a good way to get behind on the scoreboard. Jack, let's um, let's remind everybody, of course, if they need reminding, that um, six days ago, New South Wales and Queensland put on an exhibition of football here that, uh, well, just amazed everyone. How difficult difficult would it have been for Ferner to get those players together and have their minds on this test match tonight? Well, that was his job, and that's what he had to do. I mean, that was the price he had to pay. There was uh, That was the cards he was dealt, so he had to play them. Well, they're showing some concern about Wally Lewis. The uh, Kiwi trainer over to assist. McGahn checking. Well, they are concerned. They're looking towards the... Uh, a touch line, but Lewis does appear to be in pain, Jack. Well, pain doesn't hurt unless you feel it. But he's, uh, you got an extra man out there, going to have a look at it. Yeah, they're concerned about the uh, his neck, apparently. He twisted his neck and his upper back as he went in to make that tackle. And, uh, of course, there's always a great concern whenever there's a neck injury or a back injury, and rightly so. Well, I think he's going to soldier on. Okay, we'll play. We'll, uh, we'll restart now. Lewis dropping into a second line of defence. The Kiwis start to bring it back up towards the halfway mark. Shelford, five metres short of the halfway. Now Taylor. He's played strongly tonight, Taylor. Just inside Australia's territory. Clayton switching... Clayton Friend switching play 
Now it's out to Sam Stewart. Played strongly tonight as well. In fact, all the Kiwis have performed very well tonight. Now Friend. Linking up again with Cooper. Cooper's got support to it, Dean Bell, but the pass was forward. Well, the referee had no hesitation in calling it back. That pass there, I think you'll find, is the one he ruled forward. Yes, it is. Well, I went forward, but the few others were marginal, and there's been very little uh, endeavour to keep him back five yards either side, and you're allowed them all in the tackles tonight. But still, the referee has been pretty equal. OK, well, Australia bring it back inside uh, New Zealand's half. It's ten points to six, Darrell. Is yours still half-time, my friend? Well, what a shock. What a performance from New Zealand. They're really starting to throw this ball around and they're splitting Australia with some great footwork and they're backing the man up and that's what this game's all about. Well, Australia, can they fight back? I remind you of the score, 10-6. And Australia tra uh, trailing at the moment as Gene Miles stands on his feet. <laughs> He's uh, finally put down by the Kiwis. Centre field midway between the half and the quarter. New Zealand's into the ground. The Sterling now gets it out to Gary Jack. Gary Jack gets it to Pierce. Pierce now winds up, gets it back to Gary Jack, but he's wrapped up very quickly by Huey McGahn. He's lost the ball. Well, they've said penalty Australia for raking the ball out of the hands. Huey McGahn is the offender there. And let me tell you, Australia would welcome that. Here's the incident as they're rolling around, and McGahn just uh, tried to flick the ball out of the hands. Right. Well, I think he got that. He was lucky to get that penalty. Australia now in a good position. This will put them just inside the 22. Tunks is going to take the tap, and he'll charge them from there. Now he turns around and he unloads to Dow is it Dowling? Uh, Miles it was. And it's loose again as Shearer now. Shearer belts his way. He's on the line. They hold him up and they pull him over the touchline. Four or five Kiwis there just belted him over the touchline. Well, this defence very committed in the black and white jumper tonight. They've said this is the fittest team. Now look at this, Shearer battling, trying to stay on his feet, and bang, over the touchline. So this scrum now, five metres out. Kiwi ball, and they get it too. Friend now, just dances around the back of the scrum, but pull down pretty quickly. Look for the runners. They're going nowhere at the moment. The Kiwis very bunched. They're just uh, prepared now, I think, to run it out. Shelford, Shelford gets up again, still goes. He's a strong man, this Shelford, Jack. Well, he's, he's been asked to work, and that's what he's doing. He's taking it up where the yardage is tough, straight in the middle of the ruck. Taylor this time with another good little run. He's uh, the man they've, they've labelled the hit man and the tough man of this side. He's played very well, and that kick's too big. <laughs> so back it comes. Wallace, the hooker, having a kick then, but far too big. And he gets a little pat from, on the head from McGahn, who says, don't worry about it, you'll get another chance. OK, Australia looked like getting this ball. That's, well, he says play on. <laughs> Not about that, Jack. Well, that was something you don't see in uh, Australian football. I think the, he just picked it up, fell on it in the middle of the scrum, and he said, OK. It might be all right in India, then. Well, it was horror, not the Indian that got the ball. <laughs> it's Shelford again as he belts his way forward. We saw a similar instance to that at uh, Carlow Park when Clayton Friend uh, went through a scrum, much the same as that. All right, let's come back in now as they wind up, and this is Stewart, and he's played very strongly. Powerful build, this man. Second rower, remember, international numbering tonight as Williams now clears the ball down from the Kiwis, puts it deep in the Australian. Half there, and O'Connor tried everything he could to get the ball, and he couldn't. So that's a great kick from Williams. We're in a cru crucial period now. It's three minutes before half time, and there's a lot of points scored usually in this area. Well, they're, they're only uh, 12, 14 metres out, and they're going to get the feed, so they're going to get the football. Well, O'Connor tried everything he could to get the ball and couldn't. New Zealand have won six scrums to Australia's three. And one of those was against the feed, and they got this one. It's gone with the feed. Right, let's see what they can do. Out it comes. Look for the runners as Bell fires it out. And they've got some pace here as Williams joins in the back line. He gets it back to Bell. Bell trying to unload. He loses the ball. Gary Jack's got it for Australia. Gary Jack runs it out. He's taken down hard now. Cooper was the tackler, but the penalty's gone to New Zealand. Well, Jack, explain this one to me. It looked like he was talking about somebody back-chatting. 
Well, I don't know where he got that penalty. He must have enough green coupons or something because uh, I don't know where he produced it. Well, Wally Lewis is ropeable, but there was an article up here in Brisbane saying this man will not tolerate any back chat on the field. Look at Tunks. He's not happy. Wally's really done the biscuit here. Oh, he's not happy at all. But they will warn the Australians that this fellow will not have anybody talk to him on a field. Well, that's fair enough, too. Wally's doing a little acting back there. Neville Keisha, the referee from New Zealand. Look at Lewis. Oh, <laughs> I don't think I have to remind you what was said there. Made his point pretty clear. Well, the score is 10 6, Australia trailing. The Kiwis have a sitter in front. Here's Ilya, right in front. He could throw it over from here. And there's the angle. Gary Jack waiting for any rebound that might happen, but it's straight over, let me tell you. So it makes it 12 points to six. And we're just minutes out from the half time break. And the Kiwis on the boil here just before half time. Don Ferner can't believe it. Terry Parker can't believe it. We can't believe it up here. The Australian side can't believe it. The scoreboard believes it. Sure does, Jack. The new Kiwi coach, the man that took over from Graham Lowe, and a lot of pressure on this man. He picked a lot of players he felt comfortable with, and they haven't let him down. Well, the Kiwis come back again now. This is Horro. And they're outside the 22. Four tackles to go, and the time clicking away here just a minute and a half to go before half time hungry for points look at the runners they want to come on Stewart is the dummy there but it goes to Shelford Shelford gets the head down he's rolled around too much defense this time this is Taylor Taylor with a half break two by he's still going Taylor he gets it on he unloads the ball this time the bell they flick it out to uh, Stewart Stewart comes back inside holding on look to unload but couldn't do so now the Kiwis very, very deep. Let's see if they'll run it just before half time. Up they go this time. It's Cooper. Cooper with a good pass. He gets it on to Hero. Hero puts it into gear. Oh, they just get him. And he's only 10 metres out of the Kiwis raining away. Can they get him before half time? There's the chip kick for a drop goal. And yes, it's there. Well, they're scoring points every time they get into the Australian 22. And that was the bad kick either from Cooper. Just got it up and it just crept over the bar, but that's all it's got to do for one point. 13 points to six. New Zealand lead Australia. And there's the half-time hooter now. Well, what can Don Ferner do to lift this Australian side? The Kiwis are running hot. They told me Kiwis can't fly. These birds are doing it tonight. We'll take a break and we'll be back shortly with Mike and Jack Gibson. the kickoff for the second half where they are leading by 13 points to six against Australia the replacement for Australia not surprising Les Davidson for Greg Dowling Dowling had a very ordinary first half the boy from South Sydney Les Davidson's on in our commentary team Ian Maurice is on well the Australians have plenty of work to do and here comes Sterling he's caught about uh, 18 meters out from his own line cross for Pierce Pierce on the edge of the ruck. Still short of the quarter line. 13 to 6. New Zealand lead Australia. It's Tunks played very strongly in the first half. Probably one of the few Australian forwards to be able to hold his head up after that first half. Now Davidson on to replace Gary, Greg Dowling. His first touch of the ball, Davidson. It's back to Sterling. Sterling's kick is down there for Darrell Williams. Oh, Williams made a mess of it. Not backward, said the referee. Mm. I'd agree. Okay. Now, can they push him into touch? Well, he's lost the ball anyway. So the young centre, Kevin Iro, running into trouble. There are the top defenders in the first half. Roy Simmons leading the tackling count for Australia. Sam Stewart, best tackler for New Zealand. Scrum to be worked by Sterling. It's gone with the feed to Lewis, to Kenny. Here comes Jack. Jack has it now. Straightening Jack almost to the quarter line. 
before he's caught by Cooper underneath and McGann over the top. Now Davidson taking it inside the New Zealand quarter. Simmons getting it to Lewis, switching play with a pass to Sterling, into Miles and then to Kenny. Kenny's pass has been knocked down by Shelford. Knocked backward, said the referee, and Shelford put down and held by Wayne Pierce. Hurt him too. I really nailed him. He got him with a great shot, a shoulder shot. It's great for Australia. It's not much good for the boy in the black and white. Well, there was the ball knocked down by Shelford. Watch this hit from Pierce. A real jarra. Now, Shelford really wondering what hit him, where he is, what's he doing here. <laughs> Played very strongly, Shelford. Only made seven tackles. Missed a couple, but um, he's been very, very solid. Walked around the uh, training session this afternoon with a, uh, a Walkman and the headphones on. He might have something in his ear out of the music right now. Now. New Zealand in possession just outside their quarter. Taylor getting it back to Friend. Friend running around McGann, caught by Davidson. Held by Niebling. Williams kick. Back for Shearer. Shearer made good ground, still going Shearer. Up to the halfway mark, oh, fine run from Shearer. What a great season this fellow's had. Here's Lewis now. Now to Sterling. Plenty of support. Sterling still going the pass out to O'Connor. But uh, O'Connor losing his footing. Now he's held, but play now 10 metres inside the Kiwi territory. Niebling has it. Niebling caught by Horro. And also uh, Wallace. Cross to Lewis. To Miles. Miles! Miles! Miles up to the corner line, looking for support. Got it back, it's been put down though by the Australians. Linda couldn't hang on to it. Well, Don Ferner looking on anxiously, got out of his seat, as did most of the fans. Now Taylor. Tunks is in there to meet him. So was Linda. Shelford. Running into some solid defence. The Kiwis hemmed inside their own quarter line. Kiwis lead 13 points to six. Back for Stewart. Again, Tunks in there to do the tackling. This time the kick is back for O'Connor. Ooh, he got perilously close to putting his foot in the touch, O'Connor. Stepping nicely, there's the pass for Gary Jack. Jack getting it back on to Wayne Pierce. Back inside New Zealand territory now. This is better play from the Australians. Throwing it around, playing with far more purpose. Miles, no support this time. Ten metres inside the New Zealand half. Simmons to Sterling, to Niebling. Caught underneath by Horro. Order for the people in Bondi Junction. Horro. It's back to Sterling, to Lewis. The kick to the open spaces. Shearer's chasing it. Shearer's going to beat the ball, I think. Can Shearer get there? No, Williams. The ball may have beaten the ball, in fact, over the dead ball line. But Shearer was running at 100 miles an hour onto that one. Here it is. Williams was there. Well, Williams, I thought, carried it over the line. That's what they've ruled. So it's 13 to 6, and this is a better performance from the Australians, Daryl. I oh, certainly is, Ian. They've been revved up at half time. This side's just realised they are the world champions, undefeated in two kangaroo tours, and they've got plenty to play for. But so have New Zealand now. Gary Jack brings it up, takes a ball on the fly. And this Kiwi defence is still committed, but Australia looking much more dangerous in attack now. They're running deeper. They're coming onto the ball of Simmons now. Cribs a couple, gets it to Sterling. He's ducking under tackles. He's right on the 22. Simmons a dummy half. 
Where's it going to go? It goes to Lewis, and it goes on to Miles. Miles cuts it on. There's a chance now. It's Pierce. Can he unload it? No, it's a loose ball, and the Kiwis come up with it. Well, another chance. That's two that's gone begging in the last couple of minutes of this game. Taylor will play it. This is Mercer. Mercer brings it out for the Kiwis. He's played well, the winger. Looking for work all the time. Horro. Horro now just uh, goes a couple, but look at this Australian defence driving him back. They're trying to contain the Kiwis back here. Get another shot at scoring a try. 13 to 6 the score. Kiwis in front. Stewart wrapped up, though. They've gone nowhere this time. Look at this Australian defence now. Jack Gibson much more committed. Well, they got them jammed in there. Probably this is the first more or less the time the New Zealand's had at this half. They've got it to the 22 yard line. I do this bloke's made ground every time he's touched Mercer. Comes back to Taylor. Here's the clearing kick. Taken well by Shearer. How much pace has Shearer got again? He winds up and beats two. Sensational here from Shearer. All right. Hurt in the tackle. Slow to get up. Someone's down in black play. We'll keep on with the, on the ball at the moment because Neebling now gets it out to Miles. They've got a chance. Comes up to Gary Jack on the Tunks. Goes out to O'Connor. O'Connor stepping down the line. Can he stay in? No, he's out. So that's good defence from the Kiwis and some good attack from O'Connor. He was stepping, had nowhere to move. Player down in the back play for Australia. Wally Lewis down again. Well, that's a second bad knock he's taken. And he's pretty groggy too, the Australian captain, shaking the head. Larry Britton working on him. Very, very groggy. But this scrum packed down 10 metres out. It's a Kiwi feed. Australia need it against uh, the feed if they can get it, but they won't. Wait a minute. There's a penalty to uh, New Zealand. Well, that was one they didn't want. The Australians, I mean. This is what happened to Wally Lewis. Now, let's have a look here because... Well, that, you really can't tell off that one. That was Shearer with the ball there. So we come back live to the action now. The Kiwis have got out of trouble out of their 22. Here he comes, Shelford. Shelford now, driving run, makes about four or five metres, but plenty of defence here. Taylor looking for the ball. Ross Taylor, again they swamp him down. Tunks tackling his heart out for Australia at the moment. So is Davidson, the new player on. Horro. He'll play the ball. They haven't really made any any gain this time. So the Australian defence is holding as Bell. Bell makes a step and crunch down. And they're exactly where they started four tackles ago. Irio now. And he's belted down. Well, this Australian side really tackling, and the Kiwis have gone about two metres. Clearing kick to come. No, they're going to run it. Stewart this time, a little chip over the top. Lewis takes it on the fly and they take Lewis. But Australia now back in possession. But players very slow to come back on side at the moment. They're still running back as Pierce. They get a run around. And Shearer takes the, the tackle. Now they're back on side and deep, the Australians. Davidson spins in the tackle. They get it to Lewis. On to Kenny. Kenny, 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 Kenny with a little break and he takes it to the 22. Now they've got a chance, Australia. Gene Miles, dummy half. Along it comes now to Sterling. Sterling flicks a ball back for Lewis. Lewis is out in the clear, but there's no one there. He flicks a ball back for Tucks. Tucks handballs it over to Jack. They get it on O'Connor. O'Connor stepped around one. He tried to unload it, couldn't do so. Only four or five metres out now. Tucks a dummy half. Fires it out to Sterling, and there's the ball in the air. Plenty of chases. Oh, and a bad bounce for Australia. Shearer flicks it back inside. McGahn, of course, coming back after a broken arm. There's plenty of tape, and it seems to be dangling just a little, Ian Maurice. Yeah, he doesn't appear to be all that concerned about it. But uh, here's a, a loose ball now as uh, the Kiwis have been under enormous pressure from the Australians. The Kiwis just outside their own quarter. Here's Stewart. Stewart uh, caught in a hefty tackle from Les Davidson. Ten minutes into the second half. It's 13 to 6. The Kiwis lead Australia. Here's Cooper. Cooper caught by Miles. Driven back by Miles. This is the sort of defence we didn't see from the Australians in the first half. 
Now Clayton Friend. A blindside pass, which was a horror. Well, he pushed that pass, but up to Len Friend's had an excellent game. I think uh, he's been the main playmaker for the Kiwis. Mark Elia had no chance of getting to that one. Head by Sterling, gone with the feed. Here's Gary Jack into the back line. Jack still standing. Can he offload? Yes, he can. Back to Sterling. Sterling over the corner. Sterling still going. No support, though, this time. Now, can they put something on the Australians? Here's Miles showing it. Standing, getting it away to Lewis. The long pass across to O'Connor. O'Connor running diagonally. Getting out to Shearer. Shearer goes for the line. Loses the ball. Another scoring opportunity goes begging for the Australians. And Horro is down. Well, the Australians have gone so close on a number of occasions in the second half. Horro's able to play it. Now the Kiwis again are trying to get out of this danger area for them. As the Australians' commitment to defence has been much better in this second half. Play situated 12 metres out from the New Zealand line. This is Taylor playing it. And the, the hooker, uh, Wallace, kicking this time and oh, found touch beautifully. Well, that was a great kick from Wallace. Peter Tunks has made 18 tackles in this match. And every one of them have counted, I can tell you. Now, this scrum is down or right on the halfway mark. Caught in the tunnel, it'll come out to Australia. Oh, it's been kicked back and picked up by New Zealand. Oh, that's a bad scrum. Bad scrum for Australia as the Kiwis have it with Dean Bell. Now it's on to Iro. Iro slipping though and held by Kenny. Sterling in there to lend a hand, so is Miles. I'd go down to the ground if I was him. The Australians becoming a little frustrated now. There's a penalty. Miles striking out in the play of the ball. Well, Iro played that ball. He may have even dummied to play it, but uh, Miles striking out has been penalised. So the Australians continue to be frustrated now. 13 to 6 is the score with New Zealand leading Australia. If you've just joined us, that is correct. The Kiwis lead 13 6. And this is Adrian Shelford taking the ball up strongly for New Zealand. They're only about. Uh, 20 metres out from the uh, Australian line. Taylor got it back to Friend, onto Stewart. Stewart caught by the Australians, though. Pierce and Lindner combining. It's back to Cooper. And Cooper into a solid tackle from Pierce. Last tackle signal. No, what was he? Was he waving the Australians back? Here's Taylor now getting it back to Friend. Back to Cooper, to Bell, to Iro. Iro straightens. 10 metres out, Hero. Big, strong fellow. Just turned 19, this fellow. Pressure situation for Australia now. His friend spins it out to McGahn, to Stewart. Across it goes to uh, the winger, Mercer. Beautifully tackled. Now Taylor running blindside from dummy half. And that's a turnover. New Zealand used up their six tackles as Niebling brings it straight back towards the quarter line. In a great test match as Simmons is caught. Now he's able to offload. Away to Bob Linder. Linder's lost it behind him. Picked up by Taylor for New Zealand. Well, things are definitely not going Australia's way now. Frustrated on several occasions. Scoring opportunities went begging. Now the ball is bouncing the Kiwis way. And here's Dean Bell. Bell trying to straighten. Yeah, I think Bell should have released there. He had plenty of help outside him. Era. up into the quarter line he's caught 13 to 6 Darrell Eastlake what a thriller this is yes and certainly you can't take away anything from the Kiwis play now they're playing so well they really are they're running the ball a lot better than Australia they're getting the bounce of the ball too but their defense has been good their attack much better much brighter than Australia more creative here's a little chip kick through again as they try there's been a bit of push and shove in the back play there we'll see what happens balls rolled into touch and he says no we'll put a scrum down
Sam Stewart with a yellow hand there was the kicker and he's uh, a pretty keen young fellow and he's played very well okay this scrum pack remember what happened the last time but this time we come up with a ball Sterling inside the 22 Pierce bustling run takes play out to the 22 8 6 the scrum count so Australia pegging back a little bit they've lost a couple of vital ones in that two against the feed in that uh, count of eight for New Zealand Sterling coming out to Lewis Floater out for Miles, bouncing out of uh, tackles is Miles. Beautifully unloaded to Gary Jack. Gary Jack downfield, spins around to look for support, but there's none there. Throwing down on his back too, and that's a penalty. That was Taylor, threw him down. And the penalty goes to Australia. Quick tap has taken Sterling, heavy knock on Sterling too. But there's no support from Australia. They seem to be too far away from the carrier. Davidson unloads his time to Niebling. Tunks. Tunks makes a break. Beautiful ball from Tunks. But uh, yeah, it went right to the Kiwis. Jack Gibson said, yeah, great ball straight to the Kiwis as Bell comes back. And they're making uh, inroads every time they touch the black and white side tonight. Ilya now, his stepping run. And he's taken play midway between the half and the quarter, Australia's end of the ground. Up they come again, ball loose. And there's a metres gain that's in possession, average of six ta tackles, Australia 41, New Zealand 48. I thought it would have been more than that. And again, they rate away the black and whites, but this Australian defence is a little bit more tenacious. Can they hang on as Stewart now? Gets it over to Iroh. He kicks, he chases. Still going. Gary Jack gets the ball. Runs away, Gary Jack. He's looking for support. Can he link up? He does this time, though, to Shearer. Shearer puts the ball in the air. Now the chase is on. Huge bumping tackle on Shearer, but the ball loose and bouncing down in the Kiwi into the ground. But there's been a free kick awarded. Jack Gibson. Well, they got the... They got a sheer when he kicked the ball. There wasn't much in it. I just think they were probably entitled to go along with the tackle. They couldn't pull themselves up halfway through the shot. But they got the penalty. Well, it's a penalty Australia need. And the penalty's been awarded where the ball has, uh, has landed. Australia looking a little frustrated, very tired. A long time, Jack Gibson, since they've been this far behind in any test match. Well, you knew they were a little frustrated. They took a quick tap there when they could have picked up 20 or 30 yards from a kick. A or at least uh, gain that amount. But they're going to try and pick the two up and get within striking range. Well, there's the uh, position of the kick. It's on the 22, and it's about uh, probably 15 metres in from touch. Uh, Connor has been mm -hmm. kicking in sensational form this year. You really shouldn't have too much trouble with this as he lines it up. It's got plenty of height. It's got the distance. But it's waved away. Well, the score remains now. New Zealand 13 leading Australia 6 here at Lang Park. 9.30. Teresa, I love you. A love affair clouds Crockett's judgment. I'm a junkie. Miami Vice after murder, she wrote, on 9. Here at Glenfiddich in the 1880s, William Grant built a distillery. And the legend of Grant Scotch had begun. In the malting barn, selected barley is brought slowly to germination. And in these unique pot stills, the spirit achieves a rare purity and distinctive character. Today, there's not a Scotch maid could claim a finer heritage. Aye, when you appreciate what's in the bottle, you will ask for Grant. A cat's gotta do what a cat's gotta do. A cat's point of view is a cat's point of view. But a cat always knows when he's on a winner. That's why this cat comes home for his kitty cat dinner. Kitty cat. Always full of goodness, always great value. And with the varieties cats enjoy every day. Trust kitty cat to take care of your cat. A cat's gotta do what a cat's gotta do. 13 to 6. A shock here at Lang Park. A one-off test. Shearer, who took that bad knock before, comes back. 
Roy Simmons going in the dummy half. Right on the halfway line they are. Tunks takes the ball up just into the Kiwi territory. Play it back to Roycey Simmons. Looking for runners. Gets it out to Pierce. On to O'Connor. O'Connor stepping. Davidson there in support. Simmons a dummy half though. It goes back to Sterling. Sterling on to Lewis. He gets it on to Kenny. Oh, Kenny's put it down and New Zealand are back in possession. Well, the Australians just can't get their act together, can they? As New Zealand making the most of every opportunity, bring it up towards the halfway mark, five metres short, in fact. 13 points to six. New Zealand lead Australia. As Dean Bell gets to the court of the half halfway mark, in fact, inside Australian territory now. Run around with Friend and Cooper, and finally out to Stewart. And then back to Taylor. Taylor caught by Davidson. Last tackle signal for New Zealand. His friend took a stab kick at the uh, at the touch line. It was touched by Australia, and the uh, tackle count restarts. Well, that's what I mean. Nothing's going right for the Australians now. The Shelford takes the ball up. Ball loose. Anybody's ball. Referee ruling a knock-on from both sides. This team has certainly shortened them up. Uh, this Kiwi team has shortened Australia up. I'd say Davis has come in and has made a big impression. He's had his keep since he's been there. Scrum went with the feed and Jack is blindside. Pass from Sterling. Eight metres short of the halfway mark. Sterling has it again. Now across to Lewis, to Miles. One-hander to Pierce, and now to Kenny, and a good tackle, but Kenny's still able to offload. Back to Lewis, keeping the ball alive with a pass to Davidson. Davidson spinning in the tackle, trying to break free, can't do so. Nine metres short of the halfway mark. Simmons getting to Tunks, but Tunks slips. 13 to 6, New Zealand lead Australia. It's to Lewis, and Lewis's kick. He tried to salvage some yardage out of it by kicking it down centre field. Well, this is the winger Mercer who went back for that kick. And Mercer is caught in the in goal area. Michael O'Connor chasing that kick and held Mercer. Well, that fullback, he relaxed a little bit. He thought he had plenty of time, but not with O'Connor coming down pretty quick on him. In fact, it was the winger Mercer, Jack, who I think may be even playing in that fullback position now. Darrell Williams. Looks to be on the wing. We'll watch that for you. Now, goal line dropout, thanks to that tackle from Michael O'Connor. Everybody's taking their time to get the game restarted. Gary Jack has it now on the halfway mark. He's made 10. He's made uh, a good gain of about 20 metres. Simmons, Simmons, Simmons from Dummy Half. A good run from Simmons. Made about 12 metres. Inside the danger area for New Zealand as Australia spin it wide. And uh, trying to get involved with these fellows. Just can't, the breaks just won't come their way. Shearer always looking for work. Now the pass from Simmons went to Davidson. Davidson's gone without it. Dived on by Horro. See what's happening here when New Zealand get the ball, they're stringing four, five, six, seven passes together. Australia get it, they get one, they get two, they get an odd three or four. Now Wallace getting it back to Shelford. New Zealand leading by 13 points to six in their own 22 at the moment as Taylor takes it up. That one hander was back for Wallace. Across it goes to uh, Cooper. Cooper, the 5'8 court, just that's the quarter line you see on your screen. Now Wallace, not Wallace, at least the fullback Williams. Now this is Wallace, and Wallace who found touch with a beautiful kick before, looking for it again. It won't find touch, but it sent Shearer back to his own quarter line. He's caught 32 metres out from his own line as Simmons slips into the dummy half position again. Back for Gary Jack, on to Lewis. 
The pass has gone astray, but picked up by uh, Sterling. Sterling getting it away to Miles. Miles is on the halfway mark, keeping it alive. The pass has gone, been knocked down by New Zealand. Picked up by O'Connor. Play on, said the referee. Tackle count restarts. A swinging arm from Cooper on Jack and missed him. Well, they got a recount there. Got a lucky break. Now Lewis getting it back to Simmons. Simmons standing and offloading to Needling. Changing direction again, Needling. He gets to the halfway mark. A minute sticking by, 15 minutes of play remaining, and Australia trailing. New Zealand lead 13 to 6. Pass has gone to ground. New Zealand come up with it again, Darrell Eastley. Well, yes, Miles trying to unload to, uh, to Lewis. It's a move they use in the Queensland State of Origin side, and it just didn't come off. It was, the pass was a bit low. Lewis went down to get it, and the Kiwi swooped on it. That's been the story of the game. They've been on every loose ball. They're looking hungry this side. Adrian Shelford, that's the second time he's been down the night and had the magic water and sponge applied. This Kiwi side, uh, well, they've only got to hang on now. They've got a great lead of 13 to 6. Replacement uh, for New Zealand uh, warming up now. That's Gary Freeman. Remember Freeman playing in the series at Carlow Park in New Zealand last year. Good player. Andy Reserve. The players restarted now. Stewart will replay uh, play it back. On to Taylor. Taylor head down and he's tackled right on the halfway line. But Australia have the football and here's a chance to. Miles now gets it out to Kenny. Kenny down the touchline looking for some support. But he puts a beautiful pass back for McGahn. McGahn now has got the ball again. He gets it on to Iro. Iro now stepping, running away from Australia. He's got a bit of pace, this fellow. Iro coming down the field and brings it back almost to the halfway. He's bounced back on his feet again. How strong is this bloke? Oh, <laughs> swing out from Tux. <laughs> and the Kiwis pointed it out, but it missed. There's a big hit now again on Shelford. And Davison didn't. <laughs> There's some big tacklings going on here. Taylor now just into Australia's half. Well, there's been plenty of swinging arms tonight. Fortunately, not too many have hit. Of course, the last team to beat Australia was New Zealand 18-0. That was in 1985 at Carlow Park in New Zealand. You saw that one on Nines by Bullet Sports, and you're seeing this one tonight on the Nine Network. A little chip kick through, a follow two from Frangie's paper. Brian Johnson on Darrell, and uh, Brett Kenny has gone off. Kenny is off, and Brian Johnston on, and that's his first appearance for Australia. He might add a bit of spark because they certainly need it. And there's Johnston now. Plays with the St George Club in Sydney, his first touch of the ball for Australia, and it's not a bad one either because he takes play back to the halfway line. Brett Kenny off. Roy Simmons has had the head down and just doing those little runs as a loose pass goes back. Johnston falls on it. And the referee says, yes, let them play it, the Australian. So it goes on to Sterling. Sterling has Lewis, but he cuts him out and gets it to Davidson. Oh, another loose pass. Again, volleyball this time. It's back to Sterling. It's restarted the tackle count, though. They're starting to throw it around, but they're going nowhere, Australia. Somebody needs to straighten up the attack. They're just running around in circles this side. New Zealand really hustling them. Up they go again with Needling. He puts the head down and straightens up and makes a few metres. Don Ferner, shell shock, sitting there. Can't believe what's happening here. Tunks, he's tried his heart out tonight. As he goes forward again, he unloads again. And again, they try and link up, but they can't. There's too much defence. This Kiwi defence reading everything Australia does. There's one up high, one down low. Lewis, Lewis out to Sterling. Quick hands on the Pierce. Pierce turning it back inside to Sterling, a chance if he can link up. But they wrap him up and he's inside the 22, so Australia with a chance. Now let's see if somebody can run onto this ball. There's Lewis, he switches the attack again, gets it out very wide. They're running Australia, but uh, well, again, they're dying with the football. Bobby Linder has played it back, it goes to Lewis, there's the little chip kick through. But they take it well. Mercer. Freeman on and uh, Cooper is going off and Freeman will come on. Oh, that's Lonigan warming up. Freeman is on, so Lonigan, the second of the uh, New Zealand replacements, warming up. Tony Gordon giving the 
instructions there, and it'll be a pretty confident instruction he'll be giving him too. The dropout now from New Zealand is not a bad one. It goes right back to the halfway line. Gary Jack, plenty to work to do tonight. Straightens it up now. The Kiwi crowd here. There's a fair contingent singing out Kiwi, Kiwi, and why not? They're in front, 13 points to six. O'Connor with 11 minutes to go. O'Connor under one. Gets back to the 22, but again, there's no one there from Australia. Return to pass it. No one there. Simmons out to Lewis. Lewis with a little bit of clever ball work gets it on to Davidson. They're inside the 22. They need to score a try desperately, Australia. Plenty of push and shove going on as Lewis tries to get the, 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 uh, the ball in his hands. Tunks with one out the back door, taken by, by uh, Simmons. Ten minutes roughly to go in this game. They're ten metres out. Now, they're nice and deep. Sterling. Sterling show, throws a dummy. He's just inside now, eight metres out. There's the little stab kick, but it goes, gets charged down by uh, New Zealand, but it's a restart, a tackle count, so Australia still have a chance. OK, Johnston, the fresh player now, he makes a charge for the line. Johnston, tackle about four metres out, Australia desperate for a try. Lewis, Lewis goes from dummy half, gets it out very quickly to Gene Miles, he pops it up, and the Kiwis will come up with it, and listen to this crowd! Kiwi flags are flying high, and Jack Gibson and everything working for the black and whites. Everything working, they're working to get it. At the moment, they own the lead by seven, and it'll surprise me and everyone in the stadium if they don't increase it. No argument for me. What about you, Ian Maurice? Can't argue with that, can you? That's typical of the way the game has gone. Look at Dean Bell showing great pace. Bell's to the halfway mark. His pass has gone astray. Picked up by Wayne Pierce for Australia. Pierce able to offload to Linda. Linda. 10 metres, well, 32 metres out from the uh, New Zealand line. New Zealand 13, lead Australia 6 in this Winfield Test match coming to you from Lang Park. Now, can the Australians get their act together? They've gone so close, bonded at the last minute. That long floater from uh, Wally Lewis is out to Shearer, who's come on the other side of the, of the field to link up, or try to link up with uh, O'Connor. Can't do so, though. We'll play it now to O'Connor. Back to Miles. Miles is caught. Simmons to Niebling to Lewis to Sterling to Linda. Linda almost through. 32 metres out, last tackle as Lewis puts the kick in the air. O'Connor's chasing. O'Connor's offside and, uh, too. Well, O'Connor may have been offside, but the uh, Mercer, who's Going back to help Williams at fullback made a mess of it. And he's put a scrum down. Eight metres out from the New Zealand line. Sterling will feed for Australia. It uh, will go with the feed. It's now with Lewis. The run around with Sterling. A little flick pass. Miles. Miles puts a long ball out there for Shearer. Shearer steps. Shearer for the line. Shearer is caught, is he there? What's him rolling? He's rolling. Well, he's ruled a double movement. Well, I, from where we are, I think it was a pretty, it was the right decision. He's hit the ground with his arm and he's come up with a suit on replay, though. Well, here it is. Let's have a good look at it. Shearer was certainly caught short of the line, grounded up, and a second movement. That's a fair decision, Jack. So again, Australia so close and yet so far. 13 to 6 is the score with the Kiwis in front. They need a point a minute. Now 10 metres out the Kiwis. Shelford brings it up. Caught by Tunks. Lonigan. Caught by Simmons. Now Davidson, I beg your pardon. Now Wallace going blindside, getting a pass to Horro. Horro tried to bump off Davidson, who came at him again. McGarn it is getting to his feet. A little kick through and picked up by Tunks. Now with Gary Jack. 
to O'Connor. And O'Connor is uh, just 10 metres inside the Kiwi territory. Sterling to Lewis to Linda and out to Tunk standing very wide. And he's caught. Six minutes of play remaining in this test match and the Australians trail by seven. Lewis at spiralling pass picked up by uh, Sterling. To Miles now back for Johnston. Johnston out of one but caught 32 metres out. Last tackle signal for Australia. It's back with Sterling. His kick to the open spaces. Shearer's chasing. It's gone over Shearer's head. Linda tries to pick it up, but New Zealand have it. And New Zealand bring it out again with Dean Bell. Well, another near thing for Australia. 13 to 6, five and a half minutes to go, Darrell. Five and a half minutes of really tense struggle here. Australia undefeated for so long since 1985 and they were beaten then by the Kiwis in Auckland and at the moment the Kiwis leading here at Lang Park in the shock of the season one-off test series and they have the ball at the moment they have the points on the board 13 points to six up come the runner Shelford he's played his heart out tonight this Shelford has not shirked his responsibilities he's taken the ball up all night and he's taken it up hard and straight Comes out to Clayton Friend now. Ball being shown around Freeman, the new player. He's clever too. Iro gets it. He gets it back for Freeman. He can't take it though. And Wallace has jumped on it for uh, the Kiwis. Comes back to Elia. Mishandled though by Freeman. He rakes it back. But there's a knock on. So we'll have a scrum packed midway between the half and the quarter. New Zealand's end of the ground. Well, New Zealand are trying to run a try in with more intensity in Australia, and there's seven in front. Jack, I've said it all night, they look hungrier every time they get the ball, but this one uh, goes to Australia's way. Lewis now gets it on to Gary Jack. Gary Jack straightens up, but they take him. 32 metres out from the line. They need to score in the next minute or so. Here's Davidson now. Davidson goes hard, but they get him. He unloads Davidson to Simmons. Simmons running around, throws a looper out for Shearer. He's had some work to do tonight. Shearer earned his keep. Played very well. Gone so close a number of times. Simmons a dummy half. Out for Pierce on to Lewis. Lewis now a little bust, but again there's no one there, Jack. There's no one within in striking distance, even if he could have unloaded the ball. Well, he hasn't uh, run the ball at all tonight, Wally. He's probably a little injured. Chance now out wide as Johnston cut down, though, again. It's scooped up by Shearer, then on to Sterling, but this defence comes barreling through again. Darrell Williams, a manly fullback, playing for the Kiwis tonight with a good tackle. Roy Simmons, Simmons kicks. Big high punt kick taken very well though by Mercer, and he's taken in a big hard hit by O'Connor, who's uh, tackled very well tonight. That one hurt Mercer. Here's Dean Bell, he's played well. They've all played well, this Kiwi side. Hurt this time, Dean Bell. There's one thing for sure, New Zealand won this game. OK, the ball's been taken off him by Wallace and played quickly. Right, Iro will play it. He's inside the 22, pretty deep. Comes back to Ilya. And on to Lonigan. Three minutes remaining. Well, <laughs> Kiwis have the ball. And 13 to 6, and there's three Kiwi players down at the moment. But it doesn't matter. Here's another break now. Mark Elia. Elia up the field with a big striding run. Gary Jack coming at him. Elia stops and pops, and they buff him into touch. Well, a good run from Mark Elia. And that's really put this beyond Australia. Play down in the 22 area now. There'll be a scrum formed. And listen to the Kiwis. Listen to this crowd. Up goes the chant, Kiwi, Kiwi, Kiwi. Lewis gets it under Gary Jack. Australia not giving up yet. Gary Jack makes a break, but he's taken midfield. 32 metres out from the Australian line. Just minutes remaining now. This will be an historic win for New Zealand if they pull it off as Johnston now makes his charge. Look at the New Zealand team. Tony Gordon, what a moment for him. The man that took over from Graham Lowe, they said... The only man that could coach a New Zealand side to victory. A minute 27 and counting down now as the ball comes out to Lewis. 
A long floating pass over for Sterling. He shows the ball. He gets it on to O'Connor. O'Connor steps inside, gets round Lonigan. Still going, O'Connor. O'Connor still going for the line as he straightens up. The footwork of this man is unbelievable. They're still keeping it alive. Now the ball goes down with a tackle. Centre field, 32 metres out. Sterling, Sterling picks it up, but now he'll pull play up. Seconds remaining now, about 55 seconds left. And this park will erupt with the Kiwis. Let me tell you, they will go berserk here. 47 seconds, counting down. Look at the Kiwis in the dugout. Can you believe this? This is the boil over of the year, of the decade, in fact. This side undefeated throughout England and France. Look at Don Ferner. He cannot believe it. New Zealand had the availability of many of their test stars. They decided to go with a young, fresh team, and this team hasn't let them down. They've played magnificent rugby league here tonight. 17 seconds and counting down. Well, this is it. Jack Gibson has said the last play of the game. Up they come. And, oh, oh, boy, oh, boy. There'll be some bruised egos in the Australian Rugby League as the count goes down. It's all over. The Kiwis have won this test and this crowd has erupted. And in all fairness, they're showing plenty of respect for the Kiwis too. Look at McGahn, the captain. What a moment for them. Lonigan, Stewart, the emotion is high. Berners' face tells it all. Mercer, who played so well. Dean Bell. Look at Wally Lewis, the Australian captain. Oh, went to shake some hands, they're too excited. <laughs> Shelford has played so well for the Kiwis tonight. Well, Australia's colours had to be low at some stage. And this side, this young Kiwi side, this exciting football side, has done it tonight. There they are.